Welcome to On Writing with Onkaravile, the show that aims to promote reading and writing in our communities. We seek to restore pride and dignity of Africans through the power of reading and writing. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are privileged to be joined by Mr. Bono Rambani, all the way from Japan, and he is joining us through Skype. Mr. Bono, uh, welcome sir, to our show. Um, Karabile, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to, to join you on your show today. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, maybe just in a few seconds, if you can just introduce yourself you know, to our viewers, that they know who is Mr. A.K.A. Uh, Bono Rich. <laughs> I know you prefer that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's my pseudonym. Um, it's, it's, it's the one that I use for, for writing. And uh, it's becoming uh, quite, quite uh, popular uh, among among those who know me. However, um, I was born uh, Bono Furu Rambani. Bono means vision. It's it's Chivenda. Okay. Uh, so I'm a Venda speaking uh, young man uh, who was born in a place called Chidimbini in Limpopo. Uh, however, we then moved to a place or a township called Makwarela, where my parents both still live. Um, I basically went to to school in Venda until high school, where I went to uh, Luitrichat High School, which is now Makado. I, I later went to the University of Pretoria, where I studied business management. Um, I then got deported. That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> where I, I went back to Venda and completed my studies through the University of Venda, uh, where I graduated uh, with a degree in business management and then later did a postgraduate certificate in education. Um, I'm also a pastor. Uh, I was ordained as a pastor in 2009. Um, and I have been, yeah, I've been doing various things related to, to ministry um as well as some business projects as well as youth development projects so i'm married uh to my lovely wife i live with her and our two kids here in japan so that's a bit about me in a nutshell i'm also an author uh, i wrote and published my first book way back in 2016 and i intend on uh doing more writing in the years to come no, that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Bonorich. Um, you mentioned Thank you. The, the postgraduate certificate in education, uh, which right. is actually where we are about to talk about now. And you actually went to Japan to teach English, right? That's correct. Yes. So I actually want us to talk about that. You know, um, it says a lot that you, you moved from SA to Japan to teach English. And I want us to talk about the importance of actually learning to read and write English language because you will agree with me that here in SA we normally emphasize the importance of uh, learning to read and write our mother tongue or to speak our mother tongue because we feel like right. we have neglected our mother tongue and focus on English a lot mm. but then mm. somewhere somehow it also feel like now we are neglecting English, the importance of English, and focusing on our mother yeah. tongue. So I want us to yeah. talk about the balance, you know, and since you, you went to Japan to teach English, it really says a lot about it, about how other countries perceive the importance of uh, learning um, English. So let, let's talk, what, what's your view on, on this issue? Um, I believe English is, is a global, it's a global language in terms of uh, second languages because most countries or the most spoken languages in the world it, it it's 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 not the most spoken native tongue um, so however it has grown to become like a global connector for various countries um, so i i believe that english if people were intending to speak more than one language, um, English should definitely be one of those. That's if English is not already their first language. Um, as you mentioned, countries like Japan have programs that have been put in place in order to teach their 
their students, uh, their youth, the language, the English language. China has been doing it for years and they are, they're excelling. The, the English teaching market there is, is huge. Uh, we have countries like Singapore who also uh, are leading in terms of Asian countries that speak and promote the speaking of English. So if one wants to do well on a global scale, as far as business is concerned, as far as academics is concerned, um, English is definitely one of the languages to, 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 to learn and know how to communicate in. Um, so uh, the mother tongue though is, is equally important uh, as it connects us to our culture. Uh, it helps us understand our identity, which is important even when we go on to the global scale. Uh, because there are certain things that we learn uh, in our in our various cultures, which it can add more value. It adds more value to our communication and our experiences with people from other countries as well. Um, so as much as it is important, as you mentioned, the balance is also equally important, where we do not find ourselves getting too deep into English and neglecting our roots. But at the same time, we cannot be ignorant <laughs> and live as though <laughs> as though we are we are an island. You know, you know what I'm saying? So um, that balance is definitely important. However, English learning is is of I, I, I believe it's of priority. I, I wanted to ask about drawing the line, you know, and I think you touched a little bit of that, of mm-hmm. how, how do we then draw the line, you know, uh, and not maybe uh, neglect the other one. <laughs> how do you draw that line? How will someone know that I'm in the right, I'm in a balancing scale? That's a very good question <laughs> and one that I, I, I'm also looking for the answer to that, that question. Um, I'll give an example from my own personal experience with my kids, right? Um, so having grown up in Gauteng, this is my, my, my daughter and my son. Um, my son is about eight years old. My daughter is, is 10, 10, she's going to be 11 soon. Uh, actually, in two weeks' time, she's going to be 11 years old. So um, they, they grew up in a, in a situation whereby uh, we were already living in Gauteng. We're originally from Venda. Both my wife and I are Venda speakers. However, um, having grown up in an environment like Gauteng where there, there are multiple languages that has, are being spoken and the language of instruction at the schools being English, mm-hmm. uh, second language mostly usually being um, Afrikaans, although there are many schools that offer Zulu or Tswana or other native South African languages. Uh, but our challenge came where um, there was a time where our daughter stayed in, in Venda with her grandparents. And w- while she was there, she picked up on the Venda language, the Chivenda language, which was the main language that is used back home. And when she then came back to, to Gauteng to join us, um, she, she didn't know a word of English. So when we took her to school, it was, it was a very big challenge for her to learn uh, the English language to the point where the teachers advised that we should try and communicate more in English at home in order for her to catch up, yeah. you know. So uh, we grew up in a place where uh, in our high school, it was a bit closer to home. However, we used to speak and code switch between the two languages mm-hmm. with our friends. The main language of, of instruction being English. However, you'd easily find in our conversations, it, it would be like a Mubango. You know how the Mubango conversations yes. go. Yeah. Uh, and of course, many other soapies on, on, on our national television where you find one person speaking one language and then they would switch and, you know, the conversation would go on uh, using the, 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 the majority of our languages in South Africa. So how to strike that balance? I, I, I believe discipline is one of the, the key things. Um, which in our case has been really hard to implement 
because the habit of speaking in English then grew on so much to the point where by the time it was uh, time to move to Japan, coming here, they then were faced with a new dynamic of learning the Japanese language, <laughs> which then, which then, you know, shifted the balance over from, you know, speaking English, maybe a little bit of Jivenda to now completely focusing on Japanese. Yeah. And then um, English is also part of our communication at home. However, you find that our mother tongue has now been neglected uh, almost completely. It's only my, 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 my dad, the grandparent who said, no, I, I am offering to, to, you know, somehow teach uh, my grandchildren the language, although that's also been hard to implement. So striking a balance, how do we do it? I, I, I feel like discipline will, will, will be key and being intentional about it, uh, if possible, um, for people in situations like mine, because I know that I know people who are also in the city, as in Johannesburg, yes. who are from Venda or other rural areas who are also faced with the same dilemma. Mm. So perhaps... Uh, sometimes what helps is when the the helper or the house help or maid uh, speaks the local or the native uh, tongue. So that way, when they spend time with the kids, they get to also still uh, learn their mother tongue. Or the parents themselves, um, they need we need as parents to to bring about that balance. And then in a in in a school is cool context. Uh, I think it's always going to be challenging in South Africa because of the diversity that we have. Now, if we're talking about doing a second or third language, which which one will we take out of the, you know, out of the eleven official languages? Um, so it's it's something that uh, it's it's up for for further discussion and trying to come up with with solutions in order to make, make sure that as we learn the language, the English language. We also do not neglect our our mother tongues. No, that's correct. That's correct, well, yeah. Mr. Uh, Rambani. When I want us to go to a short break, but when okay. we come back, I want us to tackle the issue of schools mm -hmm. in rural areas. You know, I, I started okay. my school in rural areas where English is being taught, but mm -hmm. most of the time the subject. The teachers will then could switch, as you have said, to our mother yeah. tongue <laughs> to explain, yeah. Yeah. you know, some of the concept better, <laughs> because sure. now sure. <laughs> in English maybe we didn't understand them uh, perfectly, but then yeah. it also closes now, um, you know, the gap of not being perfect again in English because now you are used to mm -hmm. uh, your teachers explain. Um, concepts sure. in our mother tongue. So I want us to sure. to speak about that when we come from break. Where how are we going to tackle this issue of school in rural areas to actually improve? Because to be honest, personally, I improved mm. my English uh, vocab when I came to Johannesburg because I finished my school here in Johannesburg. You know, that's mm. where now I improved mm. in English and of course in personal development by reading and and speaking. Sure. So how sure. will then those kids in rural areas be helped when it comes to the issue of improving in English? So let's just go to a short break. And when we come awesome. back, we will tackle this issue. Ladies and gentlemen, let's right, just right. go to a short break. And then when we come back, Mr. Rambani will explain this concept. Uh, remember to subscribe on Share Online, like and comment on this inspirational interview. Thank you so much. The Creative Corner with Nolo Nolls, a cozy and inspiring show that features interviews with artists, showcases their work, challenges and successes, every Tuesday at 2pm only on Share Radio. Tune in live on Facebook, YouTube and TikTok. This is Share Radio. Welcome back to On Writing with Onkarabile, the show that aims to promote reading and writing in our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have Mr. A.K.A. Uh, Bono Rich uh, on our show, who has joined us all the way from Japan through Skype. Mr. Bono, welcome back sir, um, to our show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, let's just go straight to you know what we spoke about before, before the break. 
uh, the importance mm-hmm. of helping those kids in rural areas to actually improve in in English? Oh yes, uh, it's a very good question again, uh, and I just I just want to enlighten uh, your audience and yourself regarding this this issue, because we we tend to think that like a lot of people feel like speaking English fluently equals intelligence, you know. Uh, to the point where in the past, when s- someone was struggling, with, yes, yes. <laughs> whether it's pronunciation yes. or, you know, uh, speaking the language or understanding the language, they, they were laughed at and ridiculed. Yes, exactly. And, and I feel like that is, it's not right, uh, simply because one can be intelligent and not necessarily be able to fluently speak English. I've seen a lot of people that have excelled academically, uh, not necessarily being strong English speakers. Uh, However, where English comes in is it gives you the ability to communicate your ideas to a more broader audience, you, you see. So if you are intelligent, then it gives you an added value if you are able to communicate, maybe not just in English, but in multiple languages, because then you can reach so much more people, you know. So um, I just wanted to put that out there, because the same struggle, uh, Unkaravile, that um, our kids in the rural areas are having with English, you'd be surprised, is the same struggle that they are having in Japan, Mm. in this first world country they struggle with English. Yeah, The yeah. same challenge that you were referring to where our teachers who are teaching English would code switch mm. uh, and use na- the, the mother tongues or native tongues to, to teach the English language. Guess what? It's happening here as well. <laughs> where, in fact, most of the lessons, you find that 80% of the lesson is given in, in Japanese. Yes, yes. <laughs> And they're teaching, they're teaching English, which is why I believe they brought in, we, we were working as uh, ALTs, ALT is an assistant language teacher. So they have their main teachers who are usually Japanese native uh, speakers, and they teach more technical concepts, the grammar and all those things, while we as assistant language teachers come in for the more communication uh, based lessons so where they are learning the technical skills behind the language we come in as people who are there to encourage conversation Mm -hmm. to encourage them actually putting to practice the theory that they've been learning which is i guess one of the challenges that not just japanese are having but uh, rural kids in the rural area It, it has to do with uh confidence in speaking because for fear of being ridiculed and laughed at, mm. uh, the kids often refrain from expressing yes. themselves in exactly. English. Exactly. So when I came here, that was one of the things that I wanted to, you know, to, to, to try and challenge. Where create an environment where, you know, there's no shame in, in trying and making mistakes. Mm. You know, mm. uh, I mean... One, one example is you find when we as, as, as Africans or blacks or South Africans are speaking in English and someone makes a mistake or their accent is somehow off. Mm. It's not your Model C accent or your American or British kind of accent. Uh, we often make fun of each other. However, you find someone who speaks French or another European language speaking English suddenly it, it sounds sexy and it sounds very <laughs> attractive, you know. But I feel like it's some kind of uh, wrong bias that we have against, uh, you know, our own people. Mr. Rambano, where if, yeah. I'm not cutting you. Just You are raising a very interesting issue here. And now you remind me myself, uh-huh. my younger self, you know. As I have told you that I grew up in rural area. And exactly what you are saying, it used to happen to me. Because I remember, yes, uh, you know, after I improved in English, I once posted, um, you know, I wrote an article on, on my social media. I, I yeah. had an interview, you know, I was interviewing two white people. 
And then I took mm-hmm. a picture and I posted it on social media. And this is what I said. The caption was, when I was at school, my peer used to laugh at me when I tried to learn English. But little did they, did they know that I was preparing myself for a time such as this, you know, because uh-huh. now I was showing yeah. that obviously when I was interviewing those two white people, I was obviously uh-huh. telling them in English, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. it means now I'm yeah. capable to speak English, you know, with white um, people, with people who speak yeah. English uh, fluently. Now, yes, I want sir. you to come in there, you know, while you're still in the same mm-hmm. issue and maybe yeah. come with an advice to kids mm. maybe someone is watching now uh, this show and he's in rural area and he's trying to uh, learn but he's refraining because of being laughed at what can you say yeah. to that particular person and the other people who are laughing at that kid sure um firstly to that kid uh, i would say you know what to hell with anyone else that, you know, <laughs> will try to make fun of you. Excuse me for the, you know, uh, strong language. However, I, I, I really feel like it's, it's, it's nonsense that we should, uh, you know, look down and ridicule people who are trying, you know, yeah. there's no harm in trying. And um, the other thing is, th- this is what I say to the to the students here in Japan. I, I was, I, and I even as a teacher show them that I'm trying to learn your Japanese language, yes. and it's it's trapping me, it's kicking me. Yes. So I even go to the point of saying things, and sometimes I intentionally make mistakes in front of them, so that to kill that barrier, to make them feel like because the Japanese society is such that they they are about perfection in everything that they do. So that's actually even added pressure as far as them trying to learn English because they are expected to like really do really well. And so if they are failing, it it, it, it puts a bad stigma on them. So I try to create this environment where, you know what, uh, there's no shame here. You can make mistakes because we are learning. Because if you think about it this way, to that kid who's in the rural area, like, like the reason why we're able to speak our mother tongue, is because when we grew up uh, and we were born into our families, we had long, we had parents, right? Mm. Some grew up in different situations where maybe it was a single parent or they grew up with their grandparents. But Oksalayo, they had someone who was a model of the language that yes. they were born into. Yes. So in that situation, growing up as a child, you, you are learning the vocabulary, you're picking it up, and sometimes you you use, you you don't, you're not even being taught grammar. You're, mm. you're just yes. learning uh, through immersion, right? Where you are surrounded by people speaking the language. And, and so you then, you grow into it. So if you're in a situation where you are learning a second language like English and you're in the rural area, immersion is another thing that can help where... Uh, Obviously, you, your mother tongue is the one that's going to be dominating among the people that you are around. However, we are in the era of the days of social media, where from the tips of your finger, uh, you can access your YouTubes. And I know maybe in the rural area, it's a bit more challenging because of data, and you may not have kids having smartphones readily available. But whatever media you can consume, like you are sharing how you, you used to read and all of those things, Whatever media you can consume in the target language, go for it. So there's movies, you know, watch the movies. This is what we say to the kids here in Japan. Like watch, watch English programs, Mm. watch, uh, get something that you like in the language that you are trying to learn because it's the love for something that will motivate you to to do it more. Sometimes we even joke uh, with the kids uh, or with some people who are trying to learn another language saying, you know, if you get a girlfriend or a boyfriend who speaks that language, it's going to motivate you to, to study or <laughs> yeah. learn that language, even understand. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of couples who are, you know, from different cultures or different languages who, because their partner spoke a certain language and they loved their partner, they ended up learning that language naturally. So without going to class and all those things. So, um, number one, don't uh, be afraid to make mistakes. Number two, get immersed in the language. 
Uh, so expose yourself as much as possible to it. If you're on social media, there are different applications that you can you can join. Uh, there's, uh, there's applications where there are people who want to learn and who want to practice conversations. So you can go and sign up and, you know, you can be talking to people in England. You can be talking to people in Australia, America. And I believe that would even motivate you more, you know, to, 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 to learn the language. And from the, the, the point of view of teachers who are teaching English uh, in rural settings, man, let's, let's make it fun and interesting. Let's, let's not make it dull as another subject that they just need to pass and, and get good grades for. Mm. So we, we have things like gamifying our lessons. So you add fun uh, aspects to, to, to the lessons where, yes, you are teaching the poetry, you are teaching literature or whatever else that is required within the English uh, lesson or subject. But make it fun and interesting for, for to stimulate that desire to, to for the kids to want to learn in the language. I don't know if that no. Th- thank your you so I've much, especially a- especially on the issue of talking to teachers. You know, I think that one is a very important aspect also <laughs> because some of the teachers <laughs> even they discourage learners. It's it's, it's painful. You know that there will be true. teachers it's who true. will encourage learners who are trying. <laughs> you know, yeah. then it also <laughs> now talks something else to teach us that are you in the right calling you know please mm. uh, know mm. why are you there you know yeah uh, because yeah. Uh, seriously it's it, it it that one is very painful that the same person that you are looking up to who is yeah. you know who is supposed to actually encourage you to to become better version of speaking or learning yeah. or reading or writing English. The same, the same very person is discouraging you, you know. So I, I really thank you for addressing even the teachers, you oh. know. And, and I agree <laughs> with you when you spoke about, you know, not only the kids, even there are old people like you mentioned, even, you know, people mm-hmm. there, there is either Japanese, you know, uh, there are those who are still yeah. struggling, you know. And what do we yeah. do when we meet them as Africans? We don't laugh at them. You actually want, you help them to understand what they are trying to say, <laughs> you know. I mean, I've yes, seen this yes. because I'm in the hospitality industry, you know. Yes, and sir. Yes, sir. where I work, we, we have international guests, you know. Mm-hmm. And we meet, mm-hmm. as, exactly what you have said, we meet guests from Japan, from China, you know, from Germany, yes, who are struggling to speak yes. English. But what will yeah. you do? You know, you're going to make sure that you understand uh, what the guest is saying mm-hmm. and you even help the guest to yeah. actually express themselves but you cannot laugh at them you know you so the question is why like. are we then laugh at each other you know so i, I yeah. agree with you that we really need to get rid of that wrong mentality and support mm-hmm. each other knowing that there is uh, importance of you know learning to speak read or write uh, english language um you know when when yes. okay maybe before in in one minute um mr rambani before we go to our second break if you can just you did mention in your introduction the importance of speaking english when you someone want to go into business in a broader you know a broader side but i want us yeah. just to yeah. summarize in one minute uh, maybe some of the importance of uh, learning to speak or read write english okay like uh, just in general, uh, the importance of learning to read, write, and speak English. A lot of academic research that has been done um, is majority is 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 in English. Uh, the the commercial world, the 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 e-commerce world, the internet, English is the dominant language. Uh, a lot of things, even in Japan, as much as they are very proud of their language they have a lot of things which they they often use English for. So, as I said before, English is a global language and I believe it connects uh, different uh, countries and cultures and people who speak different languages. It's like a bridge between between the nations. So, we all need to cross that bridge <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambani. Yeah. Let's just go again to a short break. Then we'll continue when we come back. Uh, Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We are just going to a short break. And when we come back, we are still continue with Mr. A.K.A. Bono Rich.
Welcome back to On Writing with Onkarabile, the show that aims to promote reading and writing in our communities. We still have Mr. A.K.A. Bono Rich, uh, who has joined us all the way from Japan through Skype. Uh, Mr. Bono, let's yes. continue, sir, you know, in our last 10 minutes. Um, I want to challenge you mm -hmm. now, you know, and ask you a question that you left uh, South Africa to go to Japan. And you have mentioned yes, that, you know, there are programs that have been set there to actually help themselves to improve in English. That is why they brought you guys to come and help. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you, before mm -hmm. you left SA, um, do, mm -hmm. we, do we have such programs here in, in South Africa, such as in Japan? Um, I, I, I may be ignorant, however, I'm not aware of a program similar to that which we have here in Japan. Uh, back at home. Uh, so I think besides the extra lessons that people do privately or sometimes even within our our schools, certain teachers offer extra lessons, but those are extra lessons. But the kind of program that they have here is a unique uh, program. I know they have it in South Korea as well, where besides the main teachers who teach English, they bring in native speakers of the language uh, in order to deal with the communication part of, of of learning English, like I mentioned earlier. So I guess it's something that could be considered or maybe uh, it's not that necessary. If we could find a way to stimulate interest in our kids, I mean, we are spoiled in terms of resources in, in our home country, South Africa, that is. Um, already majority of the things that are there are in English. It just needs someone to, 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 to motivate and encourage the students and maybe invest in, in, in getting teachers to be those, or those leaders or those people who inspire the, 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 the students uh, to be the change that we want to see. You, you get it? So yes. I, I think what we probably would need to do in our country is to work on on the teachers you you mentioned something very important maybe uh, some teachers who discourage the kids and maybe it's not their calling which, of which teaching is a is a very high calling which uh, unless someone is doing it with their heart they, they're gonna destroy and damage the, the students so invest in the teachers uh, the resources are there the libraries are there where there are no libraries in rural areas Let's see if we can get the and there are organizations that do this mobile libraries and people that are raising funds to give books uh, to to underprivileged uh, areas and schools, which is great. We just need more of that to be done and more people talking about it. Also, if possible, uh, celebrities uh, who are influential uh, could also, you know, collaborate with with the government, with the Department of Education. To, to at least, you know, in, instead of the latest whatever trends and, you know, dense viral trends, make make studying, make reading, you know, fashionable somehow. I, I think it could go, go a long way in, in helping our country. No, we, we really do have potential. We do have the potential. I, I agree. And, and what you mentioned, mm -hmm. investing, you know, in teachers, I, I think... Mm -hmm. I remember, I'm not sure now, but I remember when I was still at varsity, you know, because I, I was mm. also doing education. Um, there yes, was sir. this uh, Funza Lushaka Bazaar, you know, uh, that yes. was actually encouraging uh, students to actually do English <laughs> because one of the requirements yes. to get the yes. Bazaar, if you were doing English and of course other yes. South African languages, you know, but English was also uh -huh. there. <laughs> so I sure, think that sure. was a very a good approach to actually invest yeah. in teachers. The government was investing in teachers. So I think if we can right. have more, like you said, it will also help. Mm. Uh, let me ask you mm. this question, uh, which can be our last question, uh, Mr. A.K.A. Bonoridge. Uh, when is mm. the right time to learn to read, speak, and write English? Uh, the, <laughs> the right time. <laughs> I, I'd say start them young, man. Uh, start them young. When, when, when kids are young, they have such a great capacity to learn. Uh, their, their minds are like sponges. They absorb and they're able to retain better than us adults. So as soon as they are of 
a, a place where they are able to speak, I would recommend uh, they can even learn multiple languages simultaneously. That that's how powerful the the, the kids' brains are. Uh, I've seen it with our own children, having come to Japan four years ago. Already in the first, going to the second year, their fluency level was was on another you know on another level. You know, just coming to show that like kids kids have that capacity, you know, to 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 learn a language fast. So. The right time is as soon as as soon as they say da da mama <laughs> I get that kid get that kid speaking English. <laughs> and and what about those now who have grown uh, they didn't have that opportunity mm-hmm. to start learning English young. What can you say to them? It's not too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. I mean uh, I know of a number of people who who hardly spoke the language and later on got to learn uh and became fluent to the point where they were using it uh in their daily communication and their vocation one person that comes to mind was uh, the late pastor chifua irene of uh, wrs uh i know many people may not be familiar with her however uh, she never she, she she shared the testimony of how reading the bible actually <laughs> led to her uh, improving and growing in her english ability uh um, to the point where before she, where she was not fluent she got to a point where in the prime of her ministry wherever she went all over the world she would she would preach and teach in english something that you know she she struggled with probably in her earlier days so it's never too late uh anyone can learn at any time no that that's a very good advice lastly mr yes, aka um bono rich I'm yes, going to have a conversation, you know, with one of the guests, which you know, Coach Ramado, Mano Ramado. Oh, yes. Uh, about the, the, the recent statistics that was revealed in SA, that, uh-huh. you know, 81% of l- grade four learners, they read without meaning, you know. Uh, yeah. in, in just a few seconds, <laughs> what, what do you think is the cause of one being able to read <laughs> you know mm. any language but not understanding mm. it i i'll go back and it, it may seem like i'm being redundant but as teachers um if we are just doing something to push the syllabus yes. and to finish yes <laughs> and to get it over and done with i'm <laughs> telling you we are going to get more of those statistics and it's going to get up however and it, it it leads me to just try to elaborate when i say investing in teachers i love the the funzaru shaka scheme the bursary scheme and i think that is a step in the right direction but we need more training to happen like you, you'd be surprised a lot of when i was doing pgce there were a lot of uh, teachers who were aspiring teachers who were on this bursary and guess what to them it's a matter of like i i need to pass this test i need to finish I need to get this qualification why because we are hungry we need mm-hmm. jobs yeah and the motivation is not we are not doing this because I want to contribute to the education of of the kids no I I am doing it because I need to live I need to make a living you know so at least even though that was the motivator let's get to a place where let's train them and while they are now on the job Yes, they went through the, the 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 varsity. They went through all these different sociologies and these different subjects that are a requirement. However, that understanding of why am I a teacher in relation to improving the 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 the, the education of the child and as far as language teaching is concerned, just passion as well. There's something about passion. It mm-hmm. it's it's contagious. It's contagious. So if we get uh, others who are passionate and who are you know skilled in teaching english how about we get them to a place where they are able to transfer their good practices and those skills to other teachers and model how best we can improve as language teachers and as teachers in general so let's invest in teachers no thank you so much thank you so much mr bono yeah. uh, if people want to get hold of you where can they get uh, you mr bonorich Um well 
I, I'm available on, on most social media platforms. I'm on Facebook uh, as Bono Rich. Uh, on Instagram, it's official underscore Bono Rich. And then I'm also busy with a, a project that we started uh, this year called MFG Academy, uh, which is an empowerment platform which aims to, you know, um, inspire, encourage young people as far as their careers are concerned, business relationships. Mm -hmm. So um, you can go and, you know, search for MFG Academy, uh, jobs, business and relationships on Facebook. That's the group that um, we use as an opportunity to share other opportunities that are available, whether it's business, jobs, and give some tips and feature people who are actually making a difference and an impact in society. So on those uh, different social media platforms, uh, one can, can get a hold of me. Um, besides that, uh, if you want to, to come to our church, we do church every day on mm -hmm. Facebook. It's called Jesus Everywhere. And that's where if you want to see me, you'll mostly be able to get to see and uh, interact with me. So no. yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Bono. Uh, it was very, you know, it was very nice and honor to have you on our show. Thank you so much, You're ladies welcome. and gentlemen. We have come to an end of our show. Please don't forget to subscribe to share online. My name is Unkarabile Mukoto, and I am your host. Let's meet next time on the same place, same time on Share Online. Thank you so much. <laughs>